everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial. I'm going to be showing you how to make this very cute little ring box. Now, I was requested to do this probably, I would think now, back in September, October, looking at my list and all the other requests I've got. But the other day, someone else also requested it, and I just said to them, you are in luck, because I'd already done it. So, here it is. Hope you like it. Um, I'm probably going to go smaller with the bow on the one that I show you but there is still something quite cute about it all with that big bow and such a little box but anyway yeah you can see there it's got for you I've got some I've used my cosmic shimmer pen is it cosmic shimmer no spectrum noir sorry pen just there it's got a real nice sparkle to it and this is all using the VNA2 collection so I've used the stickers and the little um, flat back pearls and the papers there which are gorgeous but just open it up and then inside you have this ring and what I've done is the ring is set in fun foam so I have die cut um, I can't remember how many layers I'll show you that when we get to it and then I've just created a little slit inside she pulls it out there we go can you see and then your ring just sits inside so this is obviously one of mine and I thought this is more, I'd say, um, in terms of size, um, <laughs> more, more people's cup of tea because you know by now the rings that I wear are always uh, pretty big. But there you go, and it sits nicely inside. Closes down, yeah, and there you go. Got a nice little ring box. So, put that to one side. Okay, so it's a reinforced box inside. So the, this, this is separate. So this box is separate, and then this is just a wrap that goes around. So for the... I've got a template that I've drawn up here because I'm going to cross this out as I show you um, because there are a lot of squares so I think it would be easier just to have a template side by side. But this is a piece of six and a half by six and a half. Just come down a bit there. Six and a half by six and a half cardstock. Okay. And then for the wrap you want a piece that's two by, I don't think I decided on the length yet because the way I'm going to show you how to do it I think will be a bit easier. So for now I've got a piece of two by eight and a quarter so it was just my default A4 width so I yeah, just yeah two inches but we will trim that down and then like I said that there's just my template along your six and a half inch side you want to score at one two and a half four and five and a half then we'll take your cardstock and do the same scoring again so one two and a half four and five and a half and then that will give you all of these squares so you'll have these three quarters of an inch by, what did I say it was, by one and a half all along the side here and then you'll have your big one and a half by one and a half squares, three, six, nine in the middle. But with the template it will make it easy when we come to cutting it all away. So if you just burnish all of those score lines, okay so that's all been burnished. Now with my template here and a black pen. I'm going to now talk you through what we're going to be completely removing. So I'm just going to draw around here. And this is again a reinforced, this is how you make a reinforced box. Okay, so that is the initial shape. So you can see we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You should have your full nine squares in the middle and then you'll have these smaller rectangles on the sides. These are all going to be what we're going to reinforce the sides with, these little tabs here. So all of this we are going to cut away. That will all be discarded, okay, like so. Then what we will do is once we've removed all that, we will then cut down these two and those two, okay. And then we do those little wedges where we cut away here, here, yeah. Oh, is that on the right? No, that way. No. <laughs> you see what I mean. And can you see there straight away they start to create these tabs? Tidy that one up a bit. Okay. You can also take little wedges. I always cut little bits off of there, there, there. I'm also going to show you this, but I just think I've had people ask and say that they really like it when I show the templates. 
and it does make it a lot easier for me to actually explain it to you. But once we've cut all that away, you can see what we're left with. And this one, this one, this one, and this one are our four sides. That's our base. Okay, so now you see me kind of roughly make that look a bit more easy to follow with my scissors. Doesn't matter which way it is, because this is, you know, it's a mirrored, uh, you know, all the score lines are the same, they mirror each other. So we're going to create this bit here first. So we want to remove, we've got one, two, three, four bits here, which is one, two, three, four. So we're going to cut all the way down that one, basically every score line, and you're going to cut down past the first score line and down to the second on all of those score lines. Okay. Now we want to remove these three. So there's one, two, three. So pop it on its side, cut those two off, cut that one completely away. Around the other side, cut those two off, and cut that completely away. So already now you can see we've recreated this. Now we just want to take these little wedges off, okay? So it's only on these two here. So again, I'm just going to come in and just snip away like so, like that. And then I'm going to take just a little wedge, not as big, because this is our reinforced kind of piece, like so. So now if I lie that back down, we've got this here, okay? Because all of this now has been cut away. So then if we just flip this around, you just wanna do exactly the same again. Okay, so now if I lay that over my template, there we go. That's what we've now cut. And you can see where we've cut away all these bits to kind of make our tabs. Now I've just cut little bits away on these four here as well but that is now all ready to be stopped down. Okay, so I will just keep that there if you want to freeze frame and then you know what you need to do. Okay, so let's just clear all this away. Okay, so I'm just gonna grab some of my wet glue and these four tabs, so this one, this one, this one, and this one is the one we're gonna glue on top of now. So do one at a time. Always making sure you focus on your Bit that's closest to your score line. But if you're using Tombow, don't go really close. And if you do, make sure it's really, really thin layer or even wipe over it with your hand because you don't want it really splodging out because Tombow is notoriously tacky and very, very sticky. It is one of the best glues out there, but you don't want to get it to the edges of your projects. Whenever I use it to mat and layer my cards, I always just go within the middle, stick it down. You don't need to go right up to the edges. So now I've got nothing oozing out the sides and that's secure, it dries very, very quick. So again, just on the edges there, I don't even squeeze the bottle, I'm just kind of dragging around the glue. Pull that one in and bring up the next size, size, the next side. And you can see how it's starting to create your cube, okay. And then do these two. And then the last one, you just have to kind of almost curve it and then tuck it around and again it gets a little bit fiddly because obviously you've got a very small area that we're working with but all of our sides have become very reinforced because if you imagine two of those side pieces that we've just stuck behind that so there's actually three layers now of cardstock there plus this piece is going to fold in over and that's the reason I never done it to the full size of this because when we fold it in and then add this inside you can see how high it's going to come up it's going to be reinforced even more. That's going to come down further than this. Not that it mattered if it didn't. But if you just fold them out now. And again, you don't need to go too crazy, but fold it in. And when you fold it in, just go in there and just make sure the glue's all spread out. And you get a nice side. I'm just going to do that with all the others. So that's now done. Now this piece here, so the fun foam, this is just the A5 fun foam sheets and I buy packs of them from the range. You can get them on eBay and on Amazon. I always get the A5, you can get A4 if you want to. And I, I 
don't really worry too much on colour. I guess if you're going to go, if you do a lot of shaker cards and stuff, white's probably the best shout really. Um, black would be good as well for your darker cards, but generally even the mixed ones it doesn't matter. So I've got the pink just because I was working with pink, but I've put two layers of white there just because that's what you're going to see when it's done. Now I've cut it to the exact same size of this because I want to really wedge it in there. I want to pack it in so it's not going to move and I'm just going to put a little bit of glue on the bottom. So you want to cut yourself yeah, one and a half. You want to cut yourself, was it 12 I said? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Eight. Yeah, 12 pieces of one and a half by one and a half. And I just cut it through my trimmer. It was fine. Um, you know, it doesn't damage your trimmer. Um, and if afterwards, maybe just get some aluminium foil and just, you know, cut a few pieces of that through your trimmer. If you're worried, it might blunt it or use one of your older ones. But you can also cut it with scissors. If you just mark along your A5 at one and a half, cut up with some long scissors and then just cut them down. If they're all a little bit wonky, don't worry, you can see there that they're a little bit, but it's really hard with fun foam to get it perfect, you know, every single one. But overall, you can see then when I look straight down, they're pretty okay. And because it's all squidgy and soft, it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to pop a blob of my glue on the bottom. This really just to kind of tack it down and then go in one side and really, like I said, look, it's snug and that is what you want. You want it to be, yeah, right in there. Now I'm cutting mine when it's in there because I, it, it, it does work fine that way. But if you feel that you want to cut it first, then don't put it in yet as I just have. But now, because now there's no, you can't see any gaps and that's what I didn't want. So it looks really, really good. And when you pull the ring in, in and out, you want it to be pretty stuff, um, stuck in there. So that's why I put that little bit of glue, but that's now all ready. So I'm going to decorate it. So we've got these ones here. So I've already stuck my pattern pieces on. Choose what, which one you want to be your front. That's got a nice full piece of the pattern there. So I'm going to stick that on my front and then the other two go on the sides because this back piece is what we're going to stick down. So you don't need to see that. And the base is going to be stuck down as well. So it's just the left, the right and the front. And obviously make sure it's up the right way. So I'm just going to stick them down. Okay, so that is now all ready. Pop that to one side. Now I'm gonna grab this strip. So this was the two by eight and a quarter. I'm gonna grab my scoreboard. You're not gonna be actually really scoring. Well, you may want to, but once I show you how I do this, and again, I do this because it's easier to do, I find this way, than try and explain the whole sixteenths of an inch thing. So pop your piece of two by, like I said, mine's eight and a quarter. With this piece here, at this point, it doesn't matter which way up it is because it's a cube. So just use it as a cube. Don't worry, you know, like I said, if it's facing up. Pop it in. Now, you want to decide if you want to have a border and how much border you want. So you see I've got all the all overhangs. So see I've got this overhang here. Now, that was a quarter of an inch, roughly. So you can see here, when I put it down, I'm not putting it right up to the edge. I'm actually starting at a quarter of an inch. So I'm just going to sit my, this cube down here. Now, this then is going to be the first piece that's going to come up. So if you just lift it up with your hand and literally just fold it, okay? Just push it up and then put it back down again. Now, more than likely, your score line or your folded line, let me just bring this up with you trying to see it. See where it folds? It is folding bang on the piece in between where my notches are. And that's because we're stretching it around something else, another piece, so it just pulls it out. So then if you have lifted it up like that, okay, so like I said, you can see now, if I bring it up, can you see the nice little overhang I've got? A quarter of an inch, roughly. So again, that's like that, and we've brought that up. What you can do now is just find any of your tracks, line up that fold, and just score, like so. And then I can just fold that around. So already now I've got my first piece. If you imagine that's now gonna stick against like so. And I've got that little overhang, okay? Next, put it in like that. So there's the folded piece, pop it in, grab this again and wedge it up to it. And then bring the next size around and really make sure it's folded right up to it. And that'll give you the, the close, nice tight fit that we want for that piece to wrap around okay and again I can see that that fold is hitting right on 
it's in between the tracks, it's on the piece that kind of sticks out. So now I can grab that again and just line it up. Actually, I'm going to flip it over so I get the score line in the right direction. Line it up in any one, it doesn't matter, and score. And I can fold that around like so. Now, when I put that in, you can see that really nicely wraps around perfectly. So now we just need to trim off. So when you pop it in, you want a quarter of an inch again to kind of come away. Or what you can do is just measure here. So this is two and one, two. Yeah, it's in between. So it's easier, again, to just grab your pencil like so. And I'm going to do mine. It's just there. Just want it to be roughly the same. So it's just under one and three quarters. That's where I put my little pencil mark there. Okay, so I'm just showing, trying to show different ways to make something. So now it doesn't matter what size you're making, by following that kind of technique, that way of doing it, you'll be able to get a nice tight fit rather than worrying about, you know, measurements and stuff. Because I'm aware that everybody may do it slightly different and therefore theirs may come out slightly different whereas this way you should all get it the same so now I can st stick that in there and you can see we've got our little ring box okay so hopefully that makes sense now it's just the fun part of decorating these last few pieces so you'll have three that should have mats on top or layers on top and one that's plain this one is optional but I just wanted to just put it on the bottom there and it just kind of gives it again a little bit more strength like so but before you start sticking these pieces down this is when you want to add your ribbon so I'm going to bring this one in here so I've got just because on my sentiments I don't really want just for you as well so I think I am going to go with this plain one because I don't know if this will be given as a birthday gift or whether it just be a just because kind of thing which it does say so I'll probably do that so I'm just going to take the whole bit off for the minute because I don't know how much I need and I can just add it on at the end so what you want to do is you're going to stick your first end of your ribbon is going to go on the bottom like this here. Now I've got mine pattern facing up so I just thought it looked nice when you, obviously when it's undone. So again it's entirely up to you but I think this one I might do the other way so do it wrong side up so you've got your pattern facing down and what you want to do is just add a splodge of glue quite far in okay because remember this is set back the box is set back anyway and then just make sure you get it centered up and just pop your ribbon on the bottom like so and then this piece here and then going to glue down on top so with this piece you're going to do the same but on the top so again put some glue set back this time with your pattern facing up again just stick that down nice and centered like so and then I'm going to have this piece on the top because it's got the most design like so and do it that way <laughs> stick that over the top so again you should have a really nice little border of whatever colour in my case it's that pink all around you can see now that hangs out it looks really pretty okay so mine's all attached at the minute it's one piece but that's fine because now I can cut that down to I think that will be enough for my bow like so and then I've still got one long piece of ribbon okay so now we want to stick um, oh, I've got these pieces here still have a nice so that one's going on the back where was my other one top oh yeah inside here I was thinking there where's my extra one so I'm going to have this one on the inside and then this one on the back because this is your base you can put one there as well if you want but for some reason I've cut that completely wrong can you see that's way big I'm not going to stick that I just noticed then so I'm going to leave that but you will have one there I will do that off camera so now we just need to stick the two pieces down so the back piece here's your front you got one two three so this back piece and this one so basically the last two plain ones you want to add glue to okay and then pop your base down first 
have it front on and just make sure that you get it again nice and centered and then stick your back down like so. I just realized as well that white one should have been a bit thicker. Can you see I've got a gap whereas with that one I haven't. I've gone all the way back. See there? So you actually want to make that one a bit deeper. I mean that's not the end of the world, I'm not worried at all but just in case you do flag it I already have. <laughs> So I'm just pushing the foam down just so I can push down onto the base there. And now when you close the lid down, look at this, it's just so cute. And then I'm going to cut it inside in a second, but I just want to make sure. Yeah, it's better when the ribbon, I think, is a bit, bit thinner. See now how that's going to make a nice little bow. Now inside, I'm going to cut it. Now this is when the, a lot of you will be saying, no, I'm going to cut it before, because I guess you don't want to get to this stage. And then if you mess this up, you've messed the whole box up. But I have done it before, so... You basically just want to cut an area that's going to be, you know, the width of the ring size, really, because you do want to, generally, rings will go down, as, you know, halfway um, across the actual ring itself. So, you know, you've got here, this is um, three quarters of an inch. So I'm going to go a little bit smaller than that because it's the fun foam and you can squash these things in and you want this to sit in nice and tight. Basically, put a hole, a marker, right in the centre first. So I'll come down a little bit, so I'm just going to... And already I've pierced down quite far, really as far as I can, because it doesn't matter. And already I've created this slit that's about a quarter of an inch. So I just need to cut out a little bit further onto each side. But again, the fun foam's very forgiving, so... Um, it doesn't matter if you do go a little bit bigger, but if you have done this before sticking it down, then maybe you can put a little pencil mark on this. But there you go. So you can't actually really see that I've cut there. You can just make it out. But now if I grab the ring and push that in, and that will go down quite far. And that is solid. That isn't going anywhere. There, look. See how far down that's squashed in there. And it looks really nice. You've got a really nice finish. With that foam on top. You could also put some decorative paper on there I guess as well but it works it does work really well. So now I'm just going to decorate the top so I've got my just because which is going to go across there. So just bring that up you can see look how much sparkle on that heart. And just see we're putting but how cute it's just so dinky and tiny and small. So now I'm gonna Tie this in a boat. And there you go. Please play around with it a little bit. You could probably have done with a little press, but how cute does that? I just absolutely love it. And there's the other one. And they are just adorable, adorable little ring boxes. I love them. So you can do them for any obviously occasions. They'd be great for Christmas, be great sat on the Christmas tree, actually like nestled amongst all the the branches and stuff and um, nice as little favours as well. You don't have to put rings in them, they can just be nice little boxes, you know, take out all the foam and stuff. So yeah, I think they will work for many occasions, but I hope for those of you that have requested this, you like it and give it a go. And um, yeah, just need to put something on the back of that one there and they are ready to be used. So as always, thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed today, please give me a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching, bye.